Yo guys, Tanmay of Simple Snippets and in today's C++ programming tutorial, we are going to be studying the topic of structures. In the previous video tutorial, we discussed about file handling and we saw a program where we performed input and output in a text file. So if you don't know how to perform file handling in C++, you can check that video in this playlist and I'll link that description of the video in the comment section or description section of this video. So with that being said, let's get started. So what are structures in C++? So let me just read out the theoretical explanation first. So a structure in C++ is a group of data elements grouped together under one name. Now these data elements are known as data members or member variables and can have different types and different lengths. It is a user defined data type which allows you to combine data items of different kinds. So structures are essentially user defined data types. Now we already know what are data types and we have seen the different types and variants of these data types in the previous video tutorial. So if you don't know what those are, you can check that video from this place list itself. So when do we need structures and what exactly is structure? So this was just a theoretical explanation. So in what scenarios do we need a structure? So let's let's take a scenario first. So this is a scenario. So wherein imagine you want to store details of a person, for example, his name, age and salary. So you have to create a program to take input from the user and store all these details for one person. So in a typical scenario, you'll have to create three variables to store these values, but that would be for one person, right? So what if you want to store details of 20 people? So in that case, you'll have to create 60 odd variables. That is three variables for each person. So for 20 people, you'll have to create 60 variables. And that is a very tedious and inefficient way of creating simple variables or the system oriented variables. So in such scenarios, we can create a structured data type. We can name it as person and include all the details. In this case, we can include name, age and salary under that person data type and then just create a variable out of this new user defined data type. So then we can simply create 20 variables for of this new structure data type or a single array of size 20. So again, this was a theoretical scenario that I just explained. So I just explained where exactly you can use structures. Essentially structures are used to create our own data types which can have complex basic data types. So a new structure variable that you create can have integer float and care together and then you can use that new data type that you've created to perform different tasks and store different values. So let me just give you a visual representation and then we'll go to a practical scenario and we'll try to write a program. So this is how a user defined data type would look like. Now in order to create a user defined data type we need to use the keyword struct. So as you can see S T R U C T and now I've created a new data type whose structure is like this and the name is books. So this new data type has multiple simple data types. That is the inbuilt data types. So I have three character variables which are essentially arrays and one integer variable which is the book ID. So all these four different data members together combine and create one structure. So when I create a data type of books, it would have all these data members which we can access. So how will that look? So let's go ahead and see a program. Okay, so quickly open up your Dave C++ ID and type out this initial C++ code which we'll need and you can see the topic is structures and this is the question that we need to write the program for. So we have to create a structure named person and we have to store his name, age and salary. So I've just written out the initial code that is required that is the hash include iostream.h to perform input output and using namespace standard and our main function. So quickly open up your programming ID whichever you use and type it out along with me so that you get a practice about this. And the first thing is we need to define a structure. So this has to be done outside the main function. And as I mentioned to create a structure you need to use the keyword struct. So I'll say struct and the name of the structure is going to be person. Now inside this structure, we have to take name, age and salary. So for name, I'll create a character array. So I'll say char name and I'll give the size of 50 or let's take it 100 for big names. Give a semicolon. The next thing is we want is age. So let's create an integer variable int age and for salary, we'll say double salary semicolon. So this is how our structure looks like. Basically, whenever we create a variable of person type, it will have all these data members which we can access and store values. So how would that look in the main function? Now we just have created the structure, but we have not initialized or created any variable of this person data type that we have just created. So in the main function, let's first print a message saying enter person details or first I'll say person details 
then I'll concatenate an escape sequence and I'll say person name enter person name and I'll say end l now before taking in person name we have to create that variable so I'll say person and I'll give the variable name as p1 so now we have to use this variable and take the input for name so how do we go about doing that so I'll say c in dot get line and inside this I'll say p1 dot name and the size of that name array which is 100 so what did I just do over here now in order to access the individual data members of this user defined data type that is the structure type we have to use the dot operator so this is the variable name p1 which is of person type and we want to access the name data member and we want to store something in this so we have to use the dot operator so I'll say p1 dot name so this would be the first argument being passed inside this get line function and the next is the size of that array which is 100 so you can see over here as well so this will take the name now I'll say c out enter age again one more escape sequence and semicolon then I'll say c in and to take age we can directly use the extraction operator I'll say p1 dot and you can see that these three data members are directly popping up in the IntelliSense and we can directly use them so this time we are taking in age so I'll say c in p1 dot age and lastly I'll just copy and paste this two lines I'll say end l and we'll say enter salary so this would be p1 dot salary if I hit control space you can see that salary variable is being accessible okay so now we have taken the input now we need to show the output as well so whatever input we have taken we'll just print it on the command prompt so I'll say see out and l person details are as follows then I'll say see out person name colon again to access the name we'll say p1 dot name this would print out the name I'll say end l and give a semicolon just copy this line and paste it two more times then I'll say person age here I'll say person salary and just change these data member values so this would be age and this would be salary so I suppose that's about it and we've taken the input in these lines and we are just showing the output in these four lines. So let's see if this program compiles successfully. I'll go ahead and save this. I'll say struct eg.cpp. Just save this. Go to execute and let's try to first compile it so that we can find out if we've made any mistakes. Okay, so we just made a typo over here. We forgot to just type in one L. So yeah, a lot of typing errors happen. Just save this again. Go ahead and compile it one more time. Okay, one more time we've missed it and I guess I just copied and pasted it three more times. So just let me just save this. Go ahead and hit compile and this should run fine. Yeah, we've successfully compiled the program. We have zero errors and zero warnings. You can see it over here. So this means we've written the program correctly. So let's see if this works properly. I'll go to execute and I'll say compile and run. Okay, so it is asking me the person name. I'll say Tanmay Sakpal, which is my name. I'll enter my age, which is 24. And I'll enter my salary that is, say for example, 10,000 rupees. Okay, so this is where we took all the input. I'll just hit enter and let's see if this prints correctly. So there you go with the output. We have person details are as follows. Then we have person name, which is Tanmay Sakpal, person age 24 and person salary. So that means we performed the entire program correctly and we successfully compiled it and run it. So that was a basic program on structures and I hope you understood why we exactly use structures. Now if we didn't have structure, we would have had to individually create these three variables for each person. Now say for example, if there was a case wherein we had to take data for 10 different people. So I could have just written over here comma p2 comma p3 comma p4 and then again taken data for p2 p3 p4 in the same way that i took it for p1 or there is one more easy way i could have just created a array variable of person type so i could have just said p2 and give a size of 5 if i wanted 5 more people and then using for loop i can iterate to these variables and access the inside data members of each of these variables so we'll see that program in the next tutorial because i don't want to complicate it right now 
we just saw a basic program of structures and we'll try to see one more vari variant of this program using structures so yeah that's about structures in c++ so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood what are structures in c++ and why they are usually used and if you have any queries you can always put them in the comment section and if you like this video give it a thumbs up you can share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to our channel peace